Well, hey folks, another great video coming up here. We got a knife vid. Um, got a few knives that I'm going to be showing you. Um, a beautiful uh, Brian Yellow Horse Whittler made by Queen. And I'm just, just going to show you a little little deal on how I price my knives and how uh, what, what's a great book for you guys to pick up. <clears throat> and this is Levin's Guide to Knives and Their Values. This is the fourth edition. This is the this is the most popular edition, and that's because it has a real it it has the prices a lot of the knives, and not only that is it's just it seems to be able you you seem to be able to uh, locate the information a lot better than than you could in the other editions. So the fourth that's why the fourth edition, if you look through Levin's guides, always seems to be higher than most, and that's because it's the most popular. Um, uh, a good example is I purchased these knives at Smoky Mountain Knife Works for about $300, just slightly under $300. <clears throat> and uh, the price guide basically values them at $130 a piece. So it's, it's extremely accurate. And uh, so it's just something that is a really good tool. And I'll show you how you look it up. So for instance, um, let's say I've just picked up this knife and the tang stamp says Hibbard, Spencer, Bartlett and Company. Um, it's a pearl handled knife. All right. Um, absolutely beautiful. It's a really beautiful, really gorgeous knife. Just gorgeous. Now, first of all, how can you tell it's real pearl? It's cold to the touch. Uh, real pearl is cold to the touch. Uh, if your hands aren't very sensitive, mine are not, uh, you can hold it to your cheek and you can feel the coolness of the pearl vice, maybe buffalo horn, which, which you can definitely tell the temperature difference. That is how you tell it is real pearl. That is one of the, the best ways I know how. Other than that, you can, I, I can just look at it now and tell, but uh, <clears throat> with experience... Uh, you can do that, but the best way to do it is just by the temperature change. So, what is this knife? When was it made? All that. So, let's look that up. This book will tell us all that. So, we will... I got the pages saved, so we're not going to be thumbing through a bunch of stuff. So, the first... And the book gives you a whole bunch of information, but what I generally use is the manufacturer list. And what that is, is basically your tank stamp. So this says Hibbard, Spencer, Bartlett and Company. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find that. Hibbard, Spencer, Bartlett and Company. Uh, it'll go over the trademark information. Chicago, where it was made. Um, made in USA. Type of firm, hardware company. And when it was made from. Uh, 1855 to 1960s. And then the estimated value of it, high. Okay, H stands for high, M stands for medium, L this stands book, for low. We'll break it up, and what? instead of, <clears throat> it'll show you a picture of what you're looking for and what type of knife. Okay, now this is a whittler, we all know that. Okay, um, so you can go through the pictures if you like, or you can read the names. Okay. So we have, oh, look at this, what is this? A Warren Cliff knife, that looks very close to what we have, okay? And then you have the whittlers. Well, whittlers didn't start off like this. They start off as equal end whittlers, stuff like that, saber grinds, all that good stuff. So we're gonna go to page 246, and I bet you 246, between 246 and 249, will give us some more information on this knife. Maybe not this particular knife, but knives of its type. And it does. It has a whole section on whittlers, telling you the whole history. Collecting whittlers, handle materials. They'll talk about the different types. Um, you know how some people used aluminum instead of the pearl handles. All kinds of stuff. Okay, so there's there's a dog leg serpentine knives right here. You get your Warren Cliff knives, but this is not a whittler. A whittler has two blades. So we'll just go straight to the price chart on the next page. It says price chart for whittlers. Value range, shape, very high, high, medium, low. Okay, 
So hi, we know that we're in this column right here because, because it already said that this particular brand pulls a high number. All right, Very high would be for materials such as construction. It'll say current or recurrent production, subtract 25%. Locking master blade, add 75%. Saber ground master blade add 10%, punch blade as 25%, handle materials, pearl add 60%, tortoise shell or ivory add 50%, genuine stag add 40%, wood subtract 20%. Now this will give you an idea. So for instance, we're going to go to our value range and we're going to go straight on down to the Warren Cliff, which is a Warren Cliff whittler. I'm going to go straight on over here, and I'm going to be above it so you guys can... I know you guys can't see this, but I'm just showing you how to use the book right quick. Warren Cliff, high range, $130. Okay? That's where we're at right now. Very high, $210. Okay? A Remington knife would pull $210, easy no matter what material it is. Okay? But due to the fact that this is a pearl handle, okay and it's in outstanding outstanding condition you could add sixty percent to that so you're looking around two hundred dollars for this knife Okay, but that's if you buy it by itself i bought these as a set whenever you buy something as a set you get it for a really good price generally real world value though would not be two hundred dollars this would be maybe insured value or an appraisal value real world ugh. Real world value of this knife would be found on eBay. eBay is a wonderful place to find out real world value. I've looked these up on eBay. You can't find this particular brand. They're very difficult to find. So that just adds to this desirability. But I would say real world value for this knife is about $140. Okay. All right, so that's enough of that. Let's look at the knives. This particular one over here is also made by the same company, and this is Buffalo Horn. Nothing really special about Buffalo Horn, um, but it is a beautiful material because it comes out very smooth. Unlike plastic, you don't have to worry about it cracking and stuff like that, but it has the same beautiful look of plastic without being a man-made material. I'll give you a special close-up look of that. So everybody really gets hung up on Queen, Case, and all these different knives. There's a lot of smaller companies that make outstanding knives out there that, in my opinion, surpass the known companies out there because you got to realize that Case and, and even Queen are extremely large companies so with that in mind you, they're gonna pump out a lot of knives being that they pump out a lot of knives you're um, <laughs> you're, you're not gonna there's gonna be a lot of them out there and it's gonna drive the prices down but at the same time if the company's really popular, it drives the price up. So you really can't tell. An unknown company, you can really get a beautiful knife. Just gorgeous. Now this one right here is Elephant Ivory. <clears throat> elephant Ivory almost looks like bone. Okay? Yes, I said bone. So, the difference is, though, is ivory doesn't have the capillaries that bone has. Capillaries are the small little holes for the, for the little veins to go through. Because um, ivory doesn't have blood vessels. That's how you can tell whether it is ivory or not. Also, it fades in time. Ivory is a pretty delicate material, but it's gorgeous. And I'll give you a very close up. It's very smooth and mil milky and creamy. It's usually cut extremely thin because it is a very expensive material. Obviously this is pre-ban. These knives are pretty old. I think it closed.
close without. It's difficult because the iPhone does not do a very good job of close-up zoom. Okay, beautiful. Now we'll look at the <clears throat> Brian Yellowworth knife. Comes with his card describing what you just purchased. Um, I went out on a limb and I bought this. I usually don't buy myself knives, but um, it was a really nice store and I liked it. And uh, it comes with a beautiful box, which I liked. And let's take a look at this. What, what Brian Yellowhorse does is he takes generally case and queen knives. This is a queen. I had the ability to, to um, actually pick between this and a case knife. Um, the queen was obviously made to a much higher standard, so that's what I chose. No offense, case guys, but that's just life. It's a beautiful, all natural materials, jade, and different types of stone. And he customizes these knives. He takes them apart and customizes them. Not only does he do that, is he actually takes the blade out and re-stamps it. How can you tell this is a queen, huh? Because on the back side, well, he says number 13. I don't know if you guys can see that. There it is right there. 13 of 50. Because right there on this side, it has queen cutlery. It has their tank stamp. This also has a, a USA mark on one of the blades. Just a real beautiful knife. It also has, which I like, a split back spring, if you guys can see that. I should have done some research on that. I used to know that pretty good. I have a case knife that's made like this from the 70s, and it's just beautiful. Very high-end knife when it's made like that. I like it. Nice thick master blade. So <clears throat> I hope that came out good. Just beautiful. I like it. I like it a lot. So I hope you guys like that. Uh, that was a video about some uh, some whittlers, uh, different types of whittlers, and how I price them. And uh, that Mark Levin, uh, bleh, that Levin's guide uh, is fantastic. Sorry, it's early. I think I only took like three sips of my coffee. Here, let me take another one. Here we go. Ah, good stuff. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. Y'all take it easy.